I made a video about this probably about five years ago on roof truss basics. This is the basic design and assembly of the product and I uh, thought it would be time to make another video since I have updated software. So here's a roof truss. Roof truss has two bearing points usually. They can have more. Don't uh, get confused about that. Uh, a standard gable roof truss like this usually just has two bearing points on the outside. Go ahead and take a look at how they are designed. And we can see here we have a completed roof truss. And wanted to point out that most roof trusses are the exact duplicate of each side. So all we have to do is make one side and slip it to the next side. And we usually end up with a roof truss. You can see the connector there. I also want to kind of point out what some of the names are. The upper um, rafter, let's say, is called the top cord. Bottom one, of course, would be the bottom cord. And everything in between is usually referred to as the webbing, even though we do have other uh, things. I know one that comes up here is a king post. And I think we have one down here is a heel, something like that. But I think for the most part, uh, webbing, top cord, and bottom cord should get us through the... Uh, assembly of it and it usually has pre-cut two by fours two by sixes i've actually seen these with two by eights depending on what they're going to be used for two by fours on the bottom i've seen them with two by fours on the top that's the most common two by sixes on the bottom two by fours on the top reverse of course two by fours on the bottom two by sixes you name it I've seen a variety of them, but they usually have metal connectors like these. I kind of separated it here to give you an idea what it would be like. Uh, metal connectors, zoom in on that. See right there. And these are usually referred to as, I want to say, mending plates. And so usually how you find them, but they can also be for, referred to as truss connectors. And they're usually pieces of metal with little pointed things sticking out of them. And they're, they're kind of made where the pointed one, you can see where there's one on each side. They, they have a machine, I guess, that stamps them out and creates the little points there. And these things are harder than heck to nail together if you're going to nail them together to just drive it in with a hammer it's almost uh, it's, it's hard to do i've seen people do it before and uh usually uh, as you're driving them in these kind of bend over and stuff like that uh, i wouldn't recommend it without using a machine or something like that if you're going to make your own trusses and you're going to beat these things in together good luck and uh, here's where they would usually go just kind of wanted to give you another angle of it here Give you an idea of what it would look like with one on the one side, the other on the other side. Gives you a pretty good view of how the teeth go into the wood and uh, pressed in there. Um, the assembly at the bottom, framing plates, you're usually going to have two 16D nails on one side, one 16D on the other side. Give you a better view of it there. This one here sticking out. Angle usually between 30 and 45 degrees. One on the other side in the middle. Kind of take a look at it with an x-ray view here. And you can see how when they're going, kind of making an x cross here, it makes it real difficult to pull this up. So toenailing can be quite beneficial, quite beneficial way to assembly a lot of, uh, assembling a lot of products in construction. Couple of filler boards here, and uh, they are used to Position the trusses in the exact spot. So if it's going to be 24 inches on center, you will lay these boards out 24 inches on center, and then they keep the trusses nice and straight. Definitely a requirement. And you don't remove these after the trusses are assembled. I mean, if you have them up at, close to the top, you could always take those off. The sheeting would um, definitely, the roof sheeting would definitely hold it all together. The ones down here at the bottom, after everything is drywalled, I guess the drywall would hold it in. So if you're thinking about removing this, maybe it's in your way on something, you probably could, but uh, I will leave that up to you. 
Truss clips um, are usually used to attach the trusses to the framing plates. And if you notice for the interior walls, you will have a full two by, two by four, two by six on the bottom here, and then a one by, so a three quarter inch. This gives you a space in between the trusses. See if I can get a better view of it here. There's a space of three quarters of an inch here. And then of course you nail at the top you uh, as the roof is loaded and weight is applied to the truss it will push the truss down in some cases and uh, this if you nailed this at the bottom then you wouldn't have uh, you make it difficult for the truss to come down so kind of get them more up to the top and the space here it's not i've seen it happen plenty of times i've seen these trusses go and sit right on top of these framing plates after the roofs have been finished or loaded at least so now one of the reasons for trusses is that you don't need any interior footings again most of the time depending upon the bearing points the bearing point on a truss like this would be at each side and no need for interior footings which can save the builder a lot of money truss connection at the top you're usually going to have blocks you won't have a ridge a solid ridge you'll have blocks in between and these can toe nail or end nail depending upon the assembly of the project and that's pretty much it trusses can save builders a lot of money and I was reading somewhere where they are I want to say over 60 percent of all building now uh, all construction are using roof trusses and it said for the floor trusses it was 35 percent but I think that might have been an outdated article because almost everything I see today has roof trusses and floor trusses. That's it for this video and I will be making a few more videos for truss repairs and stuff like that and of course I will put links to them at the end of the videos.